James, welcome to Chamber Chat. It's a pleasure to have you, my friend. Good to see you. Thanks so much for having me, Trent. Great to be here and uh, great to see you again in person. Okay, well, uh, listen, let's, let's tell the folks who you are and what organization you represent. Well, if you don't know me by last name, uh, Bogus, obviously, James Bogus, I'm the president and CEO of, in my opinion, the best airport in Canada. That's YQR here in Regina. Well, let's do a full, full disclosure. You and I have known each other for quite some time. I, I happen to be uh, part of the board that when you were hired and, and uh, couldn't be happier. And um, so I want people to know that you, you and I have certainly a, a relationship been through some things together, including the pandemic, which we'll maybe talk about and touch upon. But let's talk about the airport as a whole right now. Tell the people what the airport is all about in, in Regina and, and how important it is. Well, you know, for the listeners, they should know that you were our board chair uh, <laughs> during some of the most challenging times. And, and Trent, I've been very public about this, but just thanks for everything you did, not only for the airport, but also for me personally. I'm sure we'll touch a little bit about the pandemic, uh, challenging time for everyone, but also being a CEO in this community during those tough times Oof. was great having someone like you to rely on. I, I really want you to know that, and I very much appreciate well, all, your, you. all your stability you provided the organization and me personally. Uh, but in terms of the airport, you know, it was a tough few years. You remember yeah. when you were chair, almost no aircraft were operating at the airport. <laughs> and you're not to blame was that COVID-19. But since 2023 has hit, we've really seen a big rebound. In fact, most recent months, we've been almost 90% of 2019 passenger volumes. What a recovery trend. Incredible. And long overdue. You know, I've been in the city about six years now, actually six years this January coming yeah. up. I love Regina, got a nice family connection here to the city, but I'm honored to be the leader of this airport and to see it at its lowest, but I can guarantee you and the uh, viewers, it's going to be at its highest over the next few years. We're going to be right back to it and grow to future heights. Well, Cannot wait. under your leadership, I, I, I have no doubt that is in fact going to happen. Um, we've got lots to unpack here today. So let's start with the fact that, uh, just tell us about where the airport is today, how many employees you employ, and then really, what does the airport authority do? Right? Well, we are truly a private company. I think right. a lot of folks, if you weren't in our industry, you'd assume we are the government or we work yeah. for the government. Well, picture we're a private business that's heavily regulated by the government. Right. Almost like a crown corp, only a very different structure. We actually lease the property from the federal government. Now I'm 45 tomorrow, by the way, December 5th. But I will be. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but we will have a lease with the government till 2079. So hopefully a lot of term left for future leaders to make sure that this community has the best airport in Canada. But in terms of the airport itself, when we think about the airport, we think about serving all of southern Saskatchewan. Right. Over 500,000 people are in our catchment area. Talking about Moose Jaw, Weyburn, Estevan, Swift Current, Yorkton, just to name a few exactly. of the population centers. Yeah. And you know what I'm most proud of, though, are the people. You know, you're talking about a staff complement of around 50 to 55 men and women, depending on the season. Right. Obviously, a lot of snow to shovel in, uh, <laughs> in the winter. And these are passionate people committed to the mission of the airport, which is really to help people connect, have a great experience, obviously, at the terminal, and to make sure we have the flights people need to get to where they want to go. And you're doing that, actually. You had recently some great announcements. Uh, I can, let's, let's talk about those for a bit. So our airport markets, promotes, incents, and collaborates with local entities like Tourism Saskatchewan, right. for example. Right. Could be Economic Development Regina, this chamber, Chamber of Commerce here, yeah. um, the city itself, and even the province of Saskatchewan. We essentially collaborate and we pitch, literally pitch airlines on considering routes we think they need to take a look at. And one of the big issues we did have in the past is the lack of a daily year-round service to a major American hub. Exactly. Yeah. You know, Trent, you'll remember being on our board, we always had good service to places that were what we call sun destinations. Mm -hmm. You know, your Vegases, your Orlandos, your Phoenixes. But we had lost back in around 2015 and 2016, the Chicago's, the Denver's yeah. and the Minneapolis. So we're thrilled when we worked in partnership with WestJet Airlines, and they have announced now that we will have the return of a daily non-stop service to Minneapolis, St. Paul, starting April 28th. Brilliant. Trent, this is daily. Yeah. This means when you're planning a conference, you're doing a sporting event, you're visiting friends and family, you can count on the flight. And it was so important we waited for that daily service. And I want to give a big shout out to the province right now, as well as our city of Regina partners and many others. Yes. A lot of agencies, we all worked together 
to make this flight happen. This is not just the airport by any means. And I was at that announcement, and WestJet is very proud of their relationship with the Regina Airport. Well, we put a lot of yeah. time into encouraging, of course, more service, but the reality is it's really the local population who's embraced this. Yeah. This is you know, us, our 500,000 plus catchment area using YQR, making sure these flights are successful. So big thanks to the community for all that, for all that help. And that's not to say that we don't have a strong relationship with Air Canada. Tell us about that. Well, you know, I think Air Canada had a bit of a brush stroke painted with them about close to a year ago when they had announced the departure of Calgary. Right. I still run into some folks who ask me, when's Air Canada going to start flying again? And I think to myself, wow, <laughs> we need to do a better job marketing, apparently, as the airport. <laughs> Air Canada has blessed our community with daily service to Vancouver and Toronto for years. It is the only airline who offers those two major hubs on a year-round right. basis. WestJet flies to these places, but not as much as Air Canada. Well, most recently, we were so pleased to find that Air Canada has not only increased capacity to these major markets, so again, it's Vancouver and Toronto specifically, but they're going to be converting what was once a shared flight to Montreal with Saskatoon to a true nonstop this summer. So what that means is on June 17th and on, you can buy a daily service for the summer between here in Montreal on a return trip. Just fantastic. It's a great city. It is. <laughs> use, it is. Use, use that flight. Right? You got to use the flight. Yeah. And you know, Montreal specifically has some connections. You can't even get through Toronto. Right. And it's a nice alternative to Toronto if that's what you want to do. Um, I've only ever been once. Uh, Montreal in the summer, not the winter. Yeah. Great place to tour and check out. Lots of shoppings. Bring your credit yeah. card. It wasn't cheap, that's <laughs> for sure. Absolutely. But uh, wonderful city. What's great about what those types of flights, though, it's not just us going to Montreal, but it's Montreal and Quebec people coming here. Correct? Yes, right. and connecting. We yeah. have to keep in mind that if you're yeah. coming from Europe and you're coming to Saskatchewan, it's just another port of entry. Yes. Because uh, to a traveler from abroad, they want convenience, they want price. 100%. But more yeah. importantly, they want to make sure there's something to do, a reason to be here. Yeah. And, you know, one thing I got to tell you that Regina punches way above its weight is the ability to host large events and conferences. And our airport benefits directly. And this is why we collaborate so much with the agencies who help bring these people in. And access to the province is so important, you know, whether it's fishing and hunting. I mean, you see all kinds that come through the airport in Regina and certainly in Saskatoon as well, right? Yes, we love yeah. our hunting community, that's yeah. for sure. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. That's great. So let's talk uh, a little bit about the pandemic. Let's get that out of the way. Sure. We lived through it together, um, sure. but you're right. There was no plane. So the, the uh, I always said that the the revenue component of the airport is predicated on passenger traffic. I wasn't wrong when I was saying that, right? No, yeah. not at all. And, you know, full disclosure for your audience here, I've shed some tears in front of you over that bloody <laughs> pandemic. That yeah. was a challenging time. We both shared lots of yeah. stories. And, you know, when I look back upon it, what I reflect most on is the airport took the hard road. You know, we had to cut our costs, right. we slashed our capital program. Trent, you'll remember when you were the chair, yeah. we had to lay off over 35% of my team. I remember it. Nobody wanted to do that. But the federal government did not have any programs for airports like us outside of a very basic wage subsidy, right. which does not help when you have no actual revenue coming in the door. But we took that hard road, and that allowed us now that things are picking back up. We're able to maximize with the least amount of debt on our books. This is something that we were very passionate about as a board and, of course, as an executive team to make sure that when the time would come, we could rebound more quickly. And that's exactly what we delivered for this community. But it was not easy. I lost a lot of hair, <laughs> I can tell you. And a lot of sleep I turned gray. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, we did the right thing. And now coming out of this, we're much better positioned to take advantage of opportunities like the Minneapolis-St. Paul route, which does require yes. incentives that we have to yeah. help supply, but also future routes. You know, we talk about Montreal. We even talk about new airlines coming into our market, like Porter, for example, yeah. we're marketing to, or yeah. Lynx. These are airlines we're regularly talking to. But sometimes you got to put a little bit on the table to get them to come. And for that to happen, you got to have some money in your pocket. And I think, you know, getting through the pandemic, I, I look back at it. I mean, we had, and I'm not on the board anymore because I turned out, but we had a very strong board. And I think you still have a very, very strong board today. But more importantly, your staff and your leadership style has, has, those people are key to making sure you get through something like that, right? Our people stood by us. And, you know, this is after many of their friends and colleagues, unfortunately, had to have, you know, layoff notices right. temporarily for yeah. many. You know, within a year, we tried to get a few people back. But this is an example where it was all hands on deck. 
you were able to call the airport and I was one of the people picking up the phone. Yes, you were. Making sure that our custodial staff were still fully staffed, yeah. obviously being a, a health pandemic, but also making sure that the customer amenities, the ability for critical travel never suffered. Yeah. Our equipment operators, our firefighters, despite the depleted size of staff, everybody stepped up, nobody complained. We all knew we had a duty to do, and I'm so proud of my team for doing that. I, I, I'm blessed, but I also saw the outcome of all that hard work all that camaraderie, all of us pulling together to make it happen for YQR. And, and fast forward to today, where you just said that you're 90% of pre-pandemic levels in terms of passenger traffic. We have a robust airport, and some great things are, have happened and are happening. For example, the, the food services behind the security, that's all relatively new, I mean, yeah. the last few years. Um, but the, the, um, the partnerships you have with different organizations and the welcoming atmosphere when people are coming down that escalator, and, and, and I think you've done a wonderful job with that. Let's talk a little bit about that. Well, I appreciate that. And you know, yeah. one of the things that we pride ourselves on is we are truly the gateway of Southern Saskatchewan. Right. We love our community. I walk the terminal regularly like a passenger. I want to make sure we taste and touch what they're feeling. Yes. And one of the areas that we felt very strongly with, and we actually have a partnership with Tourism Saskatchewan, we'll be delivering a brand new info desk experience. Sure. So when visitors come, whether it be for a major conference, could be a sporting event, could be a volunteer event, whatever that happens to be, we're gonna have a space adjacent to the current security desk, right down that uh, where the escalator and of yep. course the uh, staircase is, to really activate and become that event for that time. So it's gonna give a place for volunteers, some digital collateral, but this is just a small example on how the airport can work with other organizations to make sure we have a very welcomed atmosphere uh, that, that says Saskatchewan. So yes. you gotta say Regina and Southern Saskatchewan is very important. Yes. Uh, and we feel that through partnership, we can be successful. I mean, even look at the chamber right now. Yeah. Uh, those who have a chance to travel in the next few weeks, you're gonna notice a brand new business area on the second floor. Right. We've co-branded with the Regina Chamber to highlight those businesses here in Regina that need some extra exposure. Well, you can plug in your device, yeah. use your laptop, and it's a beautiful space, again, done in partnership, and that's been a real key of our success. It's a brilliant partnership, and in, in that, I know you work with Economic Development Regina and others. Um, the food services, let's talk a little bit, in case people haven't been to the airport for yeah. a while, come early, yes. get through security, yep. and then what can you enjoy? Well, we are recommending two hours yeah. before your flight. Now, normally I was saying 90 minutes, but I gotta tell you, about a week and a half ago, all the head starts are now going out, meaning your Mexico flights, those yes. charters are very large planes. It's busy. It is, especially in the morning, but come get some food. Please spend money at the airport. We've got an amazing Skyway, which is essentially a place you can get burgers, you can get uh, rice bowls, you can get poutine. And most recently, we even put in some draft beer for the first Perfect. time. Perfect. But I got some plans I'm gonna share with you okay. for, for the listeners. So in the second floor, we used to have a Skyway Lounge, which is basically a bar, as I say it, facing the wrong direction. Yeah, in the, in the back corner. In the back okay. corner. Many yeah. people don't even know we have yeah. it. And to be fair, it was closed for most of the pandemic. Right. However, things have picked back up. So what passengers will be enjoying in the next few months, we're gonna be doing some renovation in that corner. We're actually gonna have a brand new we call it a breakfast bar until 10.59 a.m. I'll get to 11 a.m. in a moment. Yeah. But from the early morning till about 10.59, you're gonna be able to get breakfast items, lattes, et cetera, facing out where their old brioche doré used to be. I remember, yeah. And then at 11 o'clock, we're gonna turn it to a full service bar each and every day. Perfect. So you'll have a place to buy food and your alcohol and just to relax and lounge. We even have a new liquor license that allows you to take your beverage and have it anywhere you want on the second floor so long as you stay within what we call the hold room. Right. This is truly gonna address a problem which is a lack of services in that section of the airport and it will really commiserate with all the new items you already have like the Tim Hortons, yeah. the Child's Play area and the Skyway. So this is really on the other, other wing of the terminal. Very, very excited. Makes sense and good, congratulations Thank on you. that. That's fantastic. Thank you. You know what? I, you know, I'm very proud to have been associated and still call you a friend uh, with the airport. You should be very, very proud of what you're doing. Let's switch gears a little bit here. Let's talk a little bit about James. You're not new to Regina, but in the scheme of things, relatively new. Tell us about James, what he did before and, and, and how you ended up in Regina and, and, and perhaps even speak about your passion for the city. You bet. 
I got to tell you, uh, I've been here almost six years. So I moved January 18th of 20. 18. 18, okay. I'm from Victoria, BC, and I got to tell you, moving to Regina in the middle of January, <laughs> coming from Victoria, let's just say it was a little bit of a shock. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't a huge shock because my family's actually from Regina. So when I was a young boy, uh, my brother was actually born here back okay. in the 1970s. Yeah. My father worked in radio. He ended up taking a job in Victoria in a station called CKDA. It's all going to date myself a bit. <laughs> I was actually born in the city of Victoria, but right. my mom was apparently pregnant with me. And the story she tells me is they were, lived on Dudney, and she tells me that she can remember the young men running by the RCMP depot on Dudney, and she loved watching them with my brother in a baby carriage. She right. remembers that. But more importantly, she remembers how warm people's hearts were here. Right. She always remembers that Saskatchewan tenacity, hardworking people willing to give you the shirt off their back. Right. And this is why when I told her about this job opportunity six years ago, she wasn't just supportive. She started telling me stories about what she remembered about Regina. Interesting which really helped me make that decision to say, you know what, I'm gonna apply. And Trent, not only did I apply, of course I was hired, and I love this city. My wife, Melanie, who's been with me over 26 years, God willing, hopefully another 26 <laughs> yeah, more. Exactly. And our six cats, by the way, I wanna give a shout out. If you haven't rescued a cat, please uh, grab, <laughs> grab it or dog. I know you do that. Yeah, yeah, you love that. Yeah. So we, we just, my wife and I and the cats, but we've really learned what Regina is all about. We see an interconnected community of leaders who care. We see people who are hardworking, not entitled. And we see a province that's got a huge growth opportunity oh, yes. that we want to be part of. In fact, not only do I see the growth, I feel like I'm able to contribute to that growth through the role I play at the airport. And I feel blessed. And you do. And, and you know, as you know, I, I do a little work with tourism and, and help out with Tourism Saskatchewan as well. And uh, often people have said that James, you, <laughs> are more passionate about our city and our province than people who've lived there forever. And that's, that's testimony to the fact that you actually care and you've studied it and you, you get it, right? Thank you. I want to make a little plug, actually, if yeah. I could. This is a personal item for me. I remember when I first moved here too often in my first year, people, oh, where are you from? And I'd say Victoria. Right. And the answer I often got was, well, why did you move to Regina? Yeah. You know what my answer is? Why would I not move to Regina? Good Why would I not come to a place where not only is a cost of living actually reasonable, yes. but we've got actually a large p a base of not only people, but employees who want more for their lives. You can raise a family here. Yes. You have recreation opportunities. You're on the mainland. I don't have to take a bloody boat just to you know, go to Vancouver any longer. I can get in my car and I can drive. But when it comes to opportunity, you've got a province that's got unlimited upward potential. Not only do we grow the food and we have a ton of precious yes. minerals, but we have a very pro-business attitude here. And it's all of those things together that make me living here feel like a real long-term engagement. We have growing roots, we have our place out in the Southeast, we love Regina, but I've really learned that it's about the people that make it special, and I've now seen it firsthand. So if you ever hear Trent, someone say, why do you live in Regina? You should say, well, have a look. You should yeah. consider moving here too. Because it's absolutely fantastic. And I, of course, have recruited others to our city and I'll continue to do so. I'm definitely passionate about the Queen City. And you are indeed. You're also passionate about, we talked earlier about partnerships. And, and, and let's talk a little bit about your, your relationship with organizations like EDR, Economic Development, uh, the Chamber and others. Uh, how important is that to you and to the airport? Well, I have always said this, the airport is not an island onto itself. And you know, one of the first things I did coming to this community was to learn who's who in the zoo, so to speak, <laughs> find out who the players were, uh, what leadership was after, what objectives our community had. And what I found is I found great pockets of leadership, but I don't think the airport was as connected as it needed to be. So one of the first mandates in the first year was to reconnect with the leaders in the community and help us together overcome some of the challenges yeah. we we're facing. And it was a lot about air service. And you know, having a rallying cry of trying to restore, for example, a US flight really helped bind some of the partners together. But it went a lot further. We started recognizing that there was a lack of messaging in the terminal that was representative of our community, both the business community and tourism. Right. And through those discussions, we started seeing a ton of synergy where our organizations, when you strip it all back, we all had a similar mandate, which was to grow the public good, to grow the economic prosperity of our entire region. Doesn't matter whether you're an airport, you're a tourism entity, maybe you're a chamber of commerce, we wanna see growth. And because I can champion growth, it was very easy to find other partners 
in the community to work with on a variety of initiatives. It is critical, Trent. The success of the airport is the success of these partners. It's not one way or the other. And that's why I'm so passionate about making sure we work in collaboration for all of these major initiatives. That is so well said. Thank you so much. And, you know, I appreciate the fact that you do have that passion. And quite frankly, let me say this. Our city and our province is better off because James Bogus is part of it. Oh. And, and, and I can't thank you enough for being part of our chamber chat today. I know we could go on for ages, but maybe we'll have you back. How's that sound? That sounds great. And I want to do a quick plug. I'm a proud chamber member. I've been a chamber member in my previous city. If you're listening today and you're not a member of the chamber, like wake up, pick up the phone and become a member. The chamber in this city is critical, both for advocacy, but also for services. Please make sure you consider and if you're not a chamber member today. James, that was awesome. Right thank on, you buddy. so much. Appreciate it. Absolutely. All have a best. great day. Thanks so much. Chamber Chats is produced bi-weekly by Skycron as a service to the Regina business community. We produce many series, including the television series Go Nitro for NBC Sports, CBS, and Fox, as well as corporate videos, events, and live streams, all right here in Saskatchewan. We can do the same for you. If you have a video project for your organization, call us at 306-720-0097, and let's get started on your next project.